speaker on proposition side. We believe that schools should provide by the using these products can take away that identity Thanks and the black heritage. Heritage. heritage declined. What in the information declined? Yeah. Which creates a false image for young black children. children. Um, but why does the person who she adopted or the person that she's taken into her life affect um, you know, her brand that has none um, that doesn't necessarily correlate with it? Well this if you are doing like your education and you are putting in the effort, which really isn't that too much to ask. Really, if you're putting in the effort it's benefiting you. You're the one who you information declined. Um, you're the one who is education information. declined. Um, Good morning, my name is Wiam and my name is Lena and today we will be talking you through how debate works. Debating is when you argue for or against this topic. You have to prove why your team is right and why the opposing team is wrong. Let's begin with the setup of a debate. Two teams of three people sit at the front of the room. On one side there's a proposition who is for the motive and on the other side is the opposition who is against the motive. The first person on the proposition is the first speaker. The timekeeper starts a stopwatch when the speaker begins. The first speaker defines the key words of the argument and introduces the debate. Different debates have different time limits. However, the structure we are doing works like this. During the three minutes, 30 seconds in, there is one clap, which means point of information are allowed. Two minutes in, there is a clap telling the speaker they only have one minute left. And two minutes, 30 seconds, there is a clap, which means no more point of information. The second person to speak is the first speaker from the opposition team. They define the keywords and introduces their team argument. This person also rebuttals points made by the first speaker of the proposition. Rebuttals when you choose a point made by the opposing team and explain why they're wrong and you're right. Rebuttals can win or lose debates, however you must never become personal. After the first speaker of the opposition team, the second speaker of the proposition team speaks. Both um, these speakers rebut the opposition's debate and summarise their team's argument. The third speaker of the opposition team is the last person to address the audience in the debate and have the last word. This can be an advantage. At the end of the debate, the judge or judges will finally decide which, decide which team is the winner. They consider your presentation skills and timing of the debate. It's the team with the most convincing argument that wins the debate. Debating teaches you teamwork and to look at both sides of an argument. Sometimes you may not agree with the side you debate are arguing and this can be challenging but it can be a good experience to look at a topic with a different point of view. Hello everyone and welcome to this debate. Today we have um, six girls in year 10 who are debating on the motion this house believes that free Madam CJ Walker product batches should be distributed in schools. These girls have volunteered their time and are doing this impromptu, so I'd like to congratulate them for that. Also, these girls are debating on views that are not necessarily their own opinions. So they're doing really, really well to maybe fight for something that is not necessarily their personal opinion. So please do respect them for that. Be, please do be silent throughout the debate and there'll be a chance to speak during the floor debate. Okay, so each speaker will have three minutes to speak. I will clap at 30 seconds, which means it's, you're able to give points of information. In the last minute, I'll clap again to let you know that you only have a minute left. And in the last 30 seconds, I'll clap again saying no points of information. Okay, I'm going to invite the first speaker on the proposition side to define the debate. This house believes that free Madam CJ Walker product vouchers should be distributed in schools. We believe that schools should provide Madam CJ Walker vouchers to all students to end hair discrimination in schools. These vouchers will be available on a monthly basis and will be a reward for students who do well in school. Each voucher will be worth five pounds and can be used to buy more than one product. This means that they will not be given out at an excessive rate and should not be expensive for the government. This should also encourage students to do well in school so they can receive this reward. Some deal brands, which also owns Nubian Heritage and Sheen Moisture, will have received a Walker Enterprise in 2013. The, the voucher will allow students to buy any Sun Deal brand e.g. sheet moisture products which are very well known and can easily be bought in Boots, Superdrug, most local hair shops and also online. For students who want products from Madam CJ Walker herself who came up with the amazing Madam Walker's wonderful hair grower, this is available too. This is what makes this voucher very special. Madam CJ Walker products are also available to be bought online. 
If students are very tech savvy who do not see sourcing these products to be a problem for children in secondary schools with the help of parents, what do these vouchers look like practically? It will be cashless like our current parent pay system. This means your voucher account is topped up when you want the voucher. So if you don't use the whole five pounds, whatever is left over can be used next time and will not run out. We think that these vouchers are important for the following reasons. One, this will provide a good reward system. Two, this will end hair discrimination. And three, this will get students thinking about finance and budgeting in the real world. Firstly, how long do you spend on your hair? Do you care about your hair? When you get your hair done, do you feel good? How often do you try to get a new hair product? Whilst we are at school to get an education, people want to look and feel good whilst they're here. This is why this is a great incentive and reward system to get students to do well in school. If this motion passes, I'm sure everyone will be on their best behaviour. Secondly, across the country, black and mixed race peoples are being excluded because their hair is too short, too long, too big or too full. Peoples have been excluded from fades, locks, braids, natural afros and more. In 2019, five-year-old Josiah Sharp was banned from the playground at break times and eventually sent home from school due to his extreme haircut, a basic fade. In 2018, Shakazia Flanders, a, pi a pupil of Fulham Boys School, was told he had to cut off his dreadlocks or leave the school. We say enough is enough. What can we do about this? These vouchers will send a message that we embrace all hair types. Lastly, imagine everyone excited about their vouchers and thinking about how much they need to earn to get a product they really want. Students will be more business minded. Think about how much math they'll be using. This will get children more prepared for the real world where they have to manage a budget and think about how to spend their money. So if you would like an exciting new reward system, a way to end hair discrimination, and to be better prepared for the real work for the real world when it comes to money, I beg you to pass this motion. Now I'm going to invite the first speaker on the opposition side to make her case. Hello, my name is Maya and today I will highlight why I disagree with the motion this house believes that free men of CJ Walker product vouchers should be distributed in schools. To begin with, these products are destructive to hair. In fact, it has been scientifically proven that relaxers cause hair to become weak, brittle and prone to damage. It can even burn your skin, cause permanent scalp damage and result in hair loss. Handing out free vouchers is like marketing these girls a beautiful product and, and them not knowing what they signed up for in the long run. And from what I can tell, these side effects of relaxers are not very obvious when buying the product. Second of all, Madam CJ Walker product, um, Madam CJ Walker used her adopted granddaughter to advertise her product. And guess what? Her granddaughter happened to have one of the most preferred hair a black girl could wish for at the time. This sparked false hope in young black girls of the time. She used her granddaughter as a marketing weapon to promote the idea that her product will result in very desirable hair. She is trying to promote straight hair, and this is my problem. This takes me on to my final point, that she stripped young girls of their identity. Please tell me how the workplace is going to treat dreadlocks as professional, and how afros are going to be considered as smart. When women, when this woman is encouraging black girls to take on a white image. Proposition may say that these products will give school girls confidence. But explain to me why feeling confident has to include them straightening their hair. Black girls feel pressured, in, pressured to take on a whiter image, which is pushing them away from their identity. Black girls should be encouraged to feel confident about their identity, especially during Black History Month. Not only this month, but the whole year should be about black girls exploring their identity. These products, whether intentional or not, encourage prejudice towards people of ethnic minorities and could lead to girls beginning to question their own image at yet a younger age. This is ingraining racism in larger amounts of people contributing to the everlasting issue. Giving out these vouchers um, is not only avoiding, but blindly following on to systematic racism. And in the word of Maya Angelou, in diversity there is beauty and there is strength. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask the second speaker on the proposition side to make a case, and I'd like to encourage political speakers. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, Hello. Okay. Uh, my name is Martha and I am the second speaker of the proposition. 
First, I'd like to begin my speech with some rebuttal to the opposition. Maya, you have said that we will be inciting racism um, by encouraging a white European hair image. However, not all products are just for white hair. Some, and we are also going to try to encourage learning about traditional hairstyles. Learning and understanding things is directly combating prejudice. Um, the other side that will tell you that other things are important, that we should be focusing on education instead of hair. However, have you thought about the fact that students can be educated uh, through these products? There are two ways you can learn through these products. First is, these vouchers will be gained through hard work in school. This is motivation. Motivation to do well and, in the end, this benefits you. And it's, combi it's combining hard work and the benefits of this with a reward and you know that is pretty satisfying. Contemplation declining. Um, imagine, and then there is the unconscious learning that we do every day. Imagine students calculating how many of these arches they need to get to get a certain product. This is maths. Maybe you pick up a, a product and wonder how it's made. Science. Contemplation declined. Um, and then there is the controversy surrounding the products. Humanities. We aren't going to take over the entire curriculum. Obviously the subjects that you've got are important and you need to work hard on them to get these products in the first place. Point of information. Accepted. You say that we're not going to take over the whole curriculum. How much do you think this is actually going to do if it's such a portion of time? small portion of time? Every two weeks we have a lesson. This hour we spend in form. This hour is a lesson every two weeks we can spend working on problems in society such as racism and prejudice. The more we learn about these subjects, as well as having an inclusive part of them, the more we can combat prejudice. Prejudgment is different from understanding. Instead of taking over curriculum, we can learn about this every, every now and then. This hour will still make a difference. We have to start somewhere, don't we? Cyber security. This is obviously an important topic and we should talk about it, as well as fostering an inclusive um, and educating way to, you know, to bring it in. Uh, I think you so I'd like to thank the proposition for her speech. I'd like to now invite the second speaker on, on the opposition to make her case. My four points are appearance, school funding, education and code priorities. But I'll start with some rebuttal. You were talking about how the PSHT lesson, one an hour, could change everything. I'm telling you, this is not sufficient. If we want to change things, we shouldn't promote products that are going to not solve hair discrimination like proposition seems to convince you, but will actually encourage a European and more white person's hairstyle, as Maya has said. My first point is about appearances. So this is suggesting, as I've said, that students should look a certain way. Peer pressure will also pile onto this. We live in a society where criticism of your appearance comes around at every single corner. Should we bring this kind of criticism in a new way into schools? My second point is about school funding. Now the LA proposes to to give 1.84% more funding per pupil, which sounds brilliant, doesn't it? The problem is, due to, um, due to reductions in previous years, they can cap these gains, meaning that schools aren't going to get everything they're promised. With scarce resources that we have already, as well as the little time we have to teach everything, do you really think that this is what we should be putting it into? Products that aren't going to help students for a long period of time. This links to my next point, which is about education. So a study performed by Chetty Nicoletti talks about the effects of school expenditure on children test scores at the age of 16. It suggests that an increase in expenditure per pupil by £1,000 could introduce mass decline, mass English and test science test scores by 3% those at the bottom of the attainment distribution. Think about those at the bottom of the attainment distribution. Those people are probably more in need of these vouchers, but what is a better reward? Getting amazing test scores or hair volume that will last maybe a day, maybe two. I personally think that a good job and a good future is more important. Accepted. Well, what about the motivation that you can do? We're mixing in both of these stuff, so what are you suggesting we do instead? Well, as we've seen before, and what Isaac will touch on, this kind of motivation only works for a little while. We need to create other forms of motivation, like the idea that if you work hard, you can get an amazing job and an amazing future. Now to talk about my final point, COVID and priorities. The idea of a second lockdown is becoming more 
and more imminent by every day with rising cases. Now at the start of the lockdown, the first lockdown we had, students receiving free school meals from school didn't actually get their supermarket vouchers because supply was delayed. What happened? We had to take money out of school's own pockets to provide children with food, like we should, because children's health is incredibly important. What should we do then? We shouldn't put this money into something that we can't guarantee is a good way of spending it. We need to put this money into something that we know that will save children and keep children healthy. I urge you to understand that these products, they're not going to help children's education, they're not going to help children's mental health, and they're not going to help children's physical health either. Thank you for listening. Okay, now it's time for the floor debate. So in your form classes, take some time and discuss the issues to discuss. Do you feel that we should introduce these vouchers into the schools or not? Okay, form classes, welcome back. We hope you had a great discussion in your form classes. Now we're going to invite our summary speakers to summarise their points and let us know why they should win the debate. So we started with the proposition first and we're now going to start with the opposition, which is Ivy. Hi, I'm Ivy and I'm here to tell you why we're right and they're wrong. For starters, Hedy and Louisa have tried to persuade us that through the promotion of products used on Afro hair, we're ending hair discrimination. However, this is clearly not true. As Maya said, Matt and CJ Walker products are often damaging and contain chemicals like relaxants that clearly promote a white European ideal of beauty. This doesn't promote natural Afro hair, which ought to be celebrated, but not, through by, but not by creating a false image of European beauty. Martha said that we'd be educated through the opportunities these vouchers bring and that children's natural curiosity would be aroused. I say this is not true. Maya said that rather than educating children, this would distract them from that education, with kids chatting about their latest hairstyles and products rather than listening and learning. Education around Afro hair is necessary and has a place in school, however beauty standards and damaging hair does not. Louisa said this motion will reduce the issue of self-image as it will make students feel confident in their appearance. However, when hair care is brought to the school environment, children will discuss this among themselves and therefore increase peer pressure. You also said that this will help lower income families as they'll need not fund hair care. However, surely there are more effective ways that could use this much needed money to combat child poverty declined. Sarah has shown that there is no money for schools to provide these vouchers and it's unclear from your definition of the motion where this money is to come from. Is it not clear that our schools have a financial crisis and any extra strain on our resources would be cruel and catastrophic? Your overarching argument seems to be Quite that children accepted. What type of resources will be gained by doing this? I'm not quite sure what your point of information is well, talking about. Uh, do I get to clarify that? Yes. Okay, so you say that we'll be draining resources by doing it. But what resources are we draining by trying to foster this education and trying to, you know... Time and money resources of the school, which we have so little of. Your overarching argument seems to be that children will be more attentive in lessons due to the broad nature of these vouchers. Initially, yes. However, this is solely because it is a novel idea. We understand what it's like to have a reward system that you stop listening to. We, we no longer heed them because they can stop fulfilling our immediate satisfaction demands. In conclusion, Madam C. J. Walker products in school would be a frivolous expenditure that would regress racial equality and distract from the function of school. Thank you. I'd like to thank the summary speaker on the opposition for her fine speech and I'd like to invite a summary on the proposition to make her case and tell us why she in the debate. Do you want to end hair discrimination by empowering students or allow them to have a decline in confidence? Hello, my name is Louisa and today I shall be debating for the motion. So before I begin my debate, I'd like to start with some rebuttals for the opposition team. So the first thing from the opposition team, um, Maya, said that um, these products are destructive to the hair and that it's scientifically proven. And I'm, I would first like to ask where you sourced this study, as it's plainly untrue. And also you're trying to say that um, this, these products are trying to promote straight hair and that they're pressured to have the straight hair. And I don't believe that the op opposition seems to be understanding the purpose of these products to embrace and learn about different hair types. 
Moreover, Madam CJ Walker doesn't just advertise products for European hair. There are other things such as scalp treatment and many more products. And also, um, the second opposition speaker, Sarin, you said that there's not enough money to spend on products, trying to convince you that the sum of money would, detriment uh, would detrimentally impact our education. However, as the first speaker pointed out, this will not. But and uh, the kind. And um, the opposition seems to just be telling us that it's not actually pointing out, uh, seems to be telling us that it will not solve the problem of prejudice, but they're not pointing out ways that we should combat prejudice, questioning um, the morals. Okay, now on to my speech. Um, so today I will be explaining and summarising our main points. How the vouchers aim to end hair discrimination in school, the financial impact it will have on some families, and the importance of self-manage. Now on to my first point, on um, how this initiative will end hair discrimination in schools. So by giving out these vouchers in schools, it shows solidar the solidarity within the campaign to end hair discrimination and send the message that we accept all hair types. Point of information. In our school, and we want to encourage everyone to enjoy their hair and not feel that it has to look European or a certain type. And these vouchers will encourage students to be proud of their own hair types and give them the opportunity to see what different them. products can do for their hair accepted. You say that it will make students proud. Don't you think that it will make them feel like they have to change themselves? No, it won't because um, these products aren't just um, your. Um, the opposition team seems to just be saying that these products, um, you know, they straighten their hair or it's something to change their hair drastically. However, these products can be things just to strengthen their hair make them feel more confident. It's a choice, it's not a pressure. And in addition to this, by promoting the work of Madam CJ Walker, we are celebrating um, someone who has worked with hair types and it encourages us to look up to Walker as a role model as she was one of the first black women to own a successful business that has lasted over a century. And the, a large amount of students have been excluded due to the lack of representation and this will battle it and create um, a strong society. You can. Now on to my second point. These vouchers will support families financially concerning hair products and um, the price of beauty products are continually increasing and people struggle to build a healthy relationship with beauty and themselves as hair products are deemed as privilege and these vouchers will no longer place a burden on students and make them feel at a disadvantage. Now on to my third and final point on the importance of self-image. A research by an economist, Daniel Hammamesh, found that students who find their hair pretty or felt confident perform better academically, even when controlling their ethnicity, gender, parents' education as well as their income. This study absolutely shows Sirin, Maya, Hetty, Martha and Louisa for their fine speeches for working so hard at short notice without any debate clubs. Well done for preparing your speeches, that is fantastic. And we'll find out for the rest of the school who they think won the debate. Well done girls. <laughs>